Can you hear? Um, can the back hear? Okay, right. Um, hi everyone. Hello, welcome. I am Melvin. Um, my talk is on basically building your own P CSS preprocessor with Rework or Post CSS. Um, for information, Rework and Post CSS are JavaScript libraries, so it's relevant. Right, so this talk um, has an interactive component, so if you would like to follow along, if you have a laptop, um, that's a good idea. The meet, I've posted the link to these slides on meetup.com, um, so this brings you to this page. Right, it's not slides, it's just a markdown, um, but it works just as well. Okay, so some cool links to keep open, um, there's this page, there's rework on GitHub, post CSS on GitHub, and there's the interactive demo component, right? So these, these, these. Okay, so yeah. Right, and as necessary, like just Google for rework CSS or post CSS because I won't I will touch on the basics of both of these, but I won't go into full detail because like um you can there's lots of articles on rework and post CSS and you can just Google um as and when if you're really interested. Okay, so who this talk is good for? This talk is really going to be the most useful to you if you are basically a front-end uh, developer and you like, deal with HTML and CSS and JavaScript like your whole working life. Well, your whole, all your working hours, not your whole life, but your working hours, <laughs> right? Um, and you know, you probably, maybe you know about SAS, SCSS, LAS, Stylus, different ways of um, letting you write, like eventually write CSS, but doing so in a more human, same way, like not just doing vanilla CSS because there's a bit of redundancy and a bit of like um, bad stuff you always have to keep on like watching yourself for. So you use SAS, SCSS, less stylus, um, but you think that that's all there is. Um, so today I'm basically telling you that there's other ways, like you can basically kind of build your own, right? So if you don't know rework or post CSS, great, you'll learn a lot. It also helps that um, you think in JavaScript for your, like, if you think about how to solve a programming problem, you think in JavaScript because the libraries are in JavaScript. Um, I'm sure there's libraries in other languages to do it, but this is a JavaScript talk, so yeah. Okay, right, so the main point of this talk um, is just to tell you that other options exist besides SAS, SCSS, Stylus, less. You can roll your own. Um, whether or not you should do it, I'm not going to debate that because um, some of you will think like, oh, this is a good idea. Some of you are going to think like, this is a terrible idea. Why would I not want to just use SCSS? Like they've done everything for me already. Some of you, um, maybe you're a bit more hipster, you're going to build your own, then great, this is the talk for you. Okay, so this is the main point, the take home point. Um, these are just like the spawning point, right? So what's rework, what's post CSS? They are basically plugin frameworks. So this is rework, plugin framework for CSS preprocessing in Node.js. Um, this is post CSS, transforming CSS with JS plugins, right? So rework came first, written by TJ Holloway Chuck. Um, it is currently smaller and simpler to get into, like could be a good stepping stone. Post CSS is bigger, so choose depending on which you prefer. Um, so right, this is rework, and like their methods are just this constructor, um, a use method, and two string. Really simple. These are some of crap. Uh, sorry. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Right, these are some of the plugins that you would plug into Rework, right? So this is just their list. Um, this is post CSS, slightly more complex, more methods, more documentation to read, maybe a good or bad thing. So just to scroll through, this is what it is. Um, you can use these. You can do this, you can do this, blah, 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 blah. These are the plugins, like a lot more than Rework. Um, you may or may not find the plugin for you, or you could write your own. Right, so how do they work? Um, this is how it works, but it may be useful to actually like, let's go from the back, right? What we really want is we want CSS that the browser can pass, right? Um, but we don't necessarily want to write the browser version of CSS ourselves. We're gonna write something before that. So in order to get the CSS for browsers, um, before that, it takes the form of a JavaScript AST, um, abstract syntax tree, basically like just an object in JavaScript, a really huge object, which describes your CSS in a way JavaScript understands. And so to get from there, um, it came from source code. 
whatever source code you want. I mean, um, I've cancelled out CSS here because they call it a post processor because by right, you're supposed to put in CSS as input and then from there they will pass it and then they will compile the final CSS. But it doesn't actually strictly have to be CSS at the start. It could be whatever language you want. You could write it in natural language if you wanted, like make box blue, um, box full width. I don't know. Like you could invent your own thing. So whatever source code you wish. Um, so yeah, you. this is what one plugin does. Like one plugin will just basically understand your source code, pass it, do its own transformations, and spit out CSS. And if you just plug in many plugins together to form a chain, you basically get your own processor. Um, at this point, we might want to talk about post-processor and pre-processor. Like, these are what they kind of call themselves. I frankly do not like this. Like, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's misleading because like, they are almost implying that you only process like, at the end for some reason. But you can, it's really up to you whenever you want to process. So I would just prefer to call it a processor. Right? You just write your own processor. The pre or post is just a matter of timing. Right, so from the plugin chain, um, plugins can be for things like, for example, syntax that you prefer, uh, or could be things like constructs like loops, conditionals, whatever. You can do automatic, automatic fallback placing, um, polyfills, not really polyfills, sorry. Vendor prefixing, for example, right? Um, you can do optimizations if it's needed. And some plugins are basically just packs of other plugins, like they basically collect a bunch of useful plugins and you just plug it in and you're done, right? And whatever else, you can do whatever else as long as it's possible in JavaScript. Okay, so it is possible for build frameworks like Grand, Gulp, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can do in vanilla JS or you can also use as a command line tool. Okay, so that is basically the theory. So now let's actually try and use it. So this is a demo of post CSS. So in this case, I'm using post CSS and not rework um, because simply because um, I have more experience in rework. By more experience, I mean two weeks more. <laughs> and like rework is zero and post is two. Are the in the source? Sorry? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take you through it. Um, is it too small? Okay, don't worry, I am prepared. So. Okay, so what you see here on the screen or on your laptop, um, this is just the description, what it is, um, short intro. Now this is where you kind of write your processor, preprocessor, postprocessor, whatever you call it. Um, in this case, it takes the form of a node module, but like I've said, you can do it for gout, grunt, blah, 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 right? For example, you're doing post CSS, it goes require post CSS. Um, this is our zooming hack. This is your processor, you instantiate post CSS, and you add whatever plugins you want, right? And finally, your output. Um, this output is the synchronous form. There's an async form available as well. Up to you. Check the documentation. And over here, um, it's basically from left to right. You basically get your source CSS going into your final compiled CSS. Now, in this case, um, we've done one processor with no plugins. So what you see here is basically source CSS. They pass it into the AST and then they output, and it's exactly the same, right? Like, so you get um, exact match. It's almost like identity function. Um, the AST is kind of concealed, like there is this source thing. Um, it's naturally folded. If you want to unfold it and see everything, then you use this fully expanded essential for me, right? Okay, so that's what this demo is. So let's start by putting in the first plugin. So if you realize, like you realize this is actually wrong CSS. Um, you may or may not spot it, but color is wrongly spelled. No correction. Color is correctly spelled, but CSS color is wrongly spelled. Right? So let's fix it. Um, we are going to use a plugin called Spiffing. So this is it. It is basically post CSS plugin to use British English. Right? Really so yeah, like this is what they let you do. Um, <laughs> color goes to color, medium, media, capitalize, capitalize. They even let you do like please for important. <laughs> right, so 
yeah, pretty useful. I would say this is like essential for production. So you use it. And here you go. So source CSS becomes proper CSS, right? So what you are seeing here is like this is before the plugin. Well, this AST is before the plugin, and this AST is after the plugin. And you realize that over here, color changes into color gray to gray. Um, if you do like, please. So over here, like it's a bad value, gray please. It turns into gray, and they understand that it's important, right? So that's the hello world of plugins, kind of. Okay, so let's try another one. So this is. This is one of Post CSS like most signature plugins, um, auto prefixer. It basically lets you automatically put vendor prefixes. They will kind of, well, depending on how you configure it, either they would actually check can I use the website and use like um, that database, or sometimes they use a local database, right? So the really magic example is just this. Am I using it? Okay, so this is taken straight from their docs. Right, so this is a property that needs vendor prefixing. They take it from this and turn it into this. Right, so the idea is that you're just supposed to use this plugin and forget ever about vendor prefixing ever again. So now you don't have to worry about prefixes. Right, so that's cool. Um, another example. So you may be thinking like if you've been using says less they have variables, you store a value in some property, like maybe your your brand's color, your startup's brand's color or something. So variables are good, so let's use them. This is a simple variable version. This is kind of the SAS style of variables. If you want the future spec style of variables, you can get that too, but I'm showing you the SAS style. So right, let's say color is, um, you know, normally you would do something like this, like some, some really weird um, color of yours. And like somewhere else you would do Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So basically, you duplicate everything, right? Um, and you did I do something wrong? No, no, it's just straight. Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. So you would normally want to abstract this out, and you would do bread. as you would expect, you replace it variable. Okay, so source, um, compile into output, your variables are, are done, good, great. Um, so basically this is like, this is one out of the, I don't know, how many features does says have like 10 to 20 or 30, I'm not sure. But so theoretically, if you put that 10 to 20 to 30 plugins in your plugin chain, you would kind of get your own says. Except that if you didn't like one particular feature of SES, you could take it out, for example. And then you add in five features of your own. So final example um, is nesting. You probably already know what this does. Um, basically, the fact that you can do something like this. Right, so you can't do this in CSS, but now you can. Um, again, same as says less, but now it's your own. You can call it your own, right? Does it work? Yeah, it does, it does, it does work. Okay, so now you know how to kind of apply other people's plugins. That's great, you've learned something. Um, let's try what if you wanna write your own plugin, because this talk is all about like, what if I wanna build my own esoteric, hipster, really weird, eccentric feature, right? So. There are a few ways to uh, define your own plugin. Um, I'm just using the kind of the simplest way in which we will do dot use. And the syntax for this is that you can pass in a proper constructed plugin object, or you can just pass in a simple function um, for convenience's sake. Right, so the syntax for post CSS is that they give you a root argument and a result argument. And you just basically transform this root object and um, it's good to go, right? So let's say if I wanted to 
let's say I want to replicate the spiffing thing where color becomes color. So let's try and write that uh, from scratch. Right, so let's just set up some. Oh, uh, yep, this is it. Okay, well, I'll just leave it here. Okay, so in order for us to kind of write our own plugin, we kind of need to know what root is because we have to modify root. Root is basically this AST, right? So the structure of an AST is there, right? Like this is, this whole thing is root, right? So we kind of need to modify, like we realized that root kind of has nodes. This is the root node, it has nodes, and in nodes, this is a node, um, this is a node with nodes. So basically, root is a node which has nodes which have nodes which have nodes, right? Some nodes have things like um, the type is declaration, the property is color, and the value is this. So in our case, if you want to modify, um, if you want to change color to color, what we should be doing is going through all root, all nodes, sorry, all nodes, and just basically looking for nodes with a property of color, and then changing it to color. Okay? Right, so let's try it out. Um, so we will kind of need to do a bit of recursive work because root can have nodes, can have nodes, can have nodes, can have nodes. So let's make a function. Call it whatever. Um, takes in a node. So if your node has nodes, then run, sorry, then for each subnode, we need to run whatever on those. Right, so this will work because um, first argument, it will work, right? So now that's a subnode setup. So for this node itself, like if node dot, what is it, what is it, what is it? Yep. Sorry, I think it's if node type is a declaration. Right, this thing, right? Because some nodes are declarations, some nodes are not. So only for declarations. Um, right, now we do the prop test. No. Right, so if prop has this word color, um, in this case, we just do a simple replace. We just do no dot prop equals no dot prop. Like the only reason I can do this is because I rehearsed just now. So um, if not, I would have, I would spend like five minutes looking up the internet, like what's the string replace method, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so pretty cool. You've made a recursive plugin. So now we just run it on root. Um, no re need for return. You just modify root and it's done. All right, so let's see where it works. Does it work? It seems to work. Okay, so source, color, just for extra care. Color, color, color. And cool, it works. So we have built a plugin that basically turns color into color. So, yay. Congrats. Um, so now, like, if you follow along, you can basically put in a resume, like, I have post-CSS experience, right? So, <laughs> and then you get so yeah, like, just to sum up everything. Um, yeah, so just to kind of go through the pros and cons very quickly. Right, pros and cons of doing something like this. Um, pro number one, get to build your own workflow. Con number one, have to build your own workflow. Which is why I said, like, I'm not gonna convince you whether this is a good idea or not. It may not be. It especially might not be a good idea if you are doing it in, like, like if it's your day job, um, then you kind of want to write CSS code that everybody can understand 
rather than just you. Or it's not hell for new developers. But if it's a side project and like you kind of just hate CSS in general, despite it being your source of money, um, then you can write your own CSS dialect if you wish, if you have time, right? So yeah, um, this is especially useful if you kind of find the idea of like separating, like if you find the idea of HTML and CSS and JavaScript being totally separated, um, kind of weird, then this might be for you because this kind of brings CSS more to JavaScript. But if you find what I've said, what I've just said kind of um, like weird, then like forget it, like don't bother, right? So drawbacks of this is, yeah, number one, what about other developers mentioned already? Number two, now this means that your own source code, like your syntax highlighting, how is your editor gonna handle that? Are you gonna write your own syntax highlighting functionality for your text editor? Like, it's just going down one big rabbit hole, so right? you could show us how to do that next time. Um, <laughs> it's maybe. Honestly, it, it's about as easy as, that, that's how syntax highlighters work. They highlight yep. your code into an ASD, and then you just mark things with a different color. Yep, possibly. Yep, okay, so that's it. Hope you had fun. <laughs> Questions, please? Thanks. <laughs> Questions?